everybody here. Look. This is America today. Traverse City, Michigan. The best place to live in the state. Not for these people. Well, that was crazy. I was in Traverse City, Michigan. I was talking to people in town about what it's like to live here. I told them, this place is great. But I hear there's a lot of drama. They said, oh yeah, there's drama. Did you see the homeless camp in the middle of the town? I was like, no. This was a real scene, I tell ya. I've never seen anything like it. And I do this for a living. It's everywhere now. Even in the best place to live in Michigan. Supposedly. Now we're going to come back to this mess later. We're going to see a lot more of this racket. Because I know you people like to ooh and ah at all this shit. Traverse City, Michigan, the state's most exclusive and popular resort town. Looking around, you can see why a bunch of websites call this the best place to live in the state. Look at that view. But there's drama here. A lot of drama. Drama for your mama. And you people like drama, don't you? All the great white north. Well, it isn't white today. This was the fourth day on this big Great Lakes adventure, and we still hadn't had any snow, even in northern Michigan. The whole point of coming up here was to see cold and dark and, well, winter. Uh-uh. Just so happened, the time I finally decided to suck it up and do a real winter trip, in real winter land, and nope. It had been like this up here in Traverse City for just about the entire winter. They had a few snows up here, but the local news was already calling it Michigan's lost winter, and it was only the middle of February. One article I saw said this was one of the least snowiest winters in Michigan's history. They were breaking records all over the state. It's just been unusually warm and, well, just not what it usually is. The only snow on the ground when we got here were these big ugly piles that had collected dirt and trash. The biggest snow drifts in town were in the Walmart parking lot. It sucks. But whatever, you get what you get. And by the end of the weekend, I'd see some snow. Swear! Okay, so where in the Michigan are we anyways? We're here. Traverse City's in northern Michigan, just about as far up as you can go before you're in the Upper Peninsula. It's right along Lake Michigan. Hello, there she is. That's the first time I saw that lake on this trip. She sure is pretty. Hey guys. Here they come. They see some suckers. That water's freezing this time of year, but it's not frozen. Should be. 
We're going to circle that lake right there. We're going to see a lot more of it. Believe me. And we're going to see other great lakes later in this trip. You just wait till we get to the snow part. That's when the fun really begins. But that's later on. Traverse City has a population of 16,000, and it's going up. And that's where the drama part starts. There's a lot of people in town who don't like the going up part. There's drama everywhere in America anymore these days, huh? Traverse City was an old logging town back in the day. They started laying track up here in the late 1800s because it was easy for them to get all the trees out of northern Michigan. Lumber barons made this place home for a long time. And then about 100 years ago, they started planting cherry trees all over the area. And that really made the place take off. They started throwing these big cherry festivals up here. So people came in and they were like, wow, this place is amazing. And then they started promoting the place with billboards. And Tim Allen even did commercials to spread the word. That's when everyone knew who Tim Allen was. Tell people around here, I'm from Traverse City. And they'd be like, oh my gosh, you're so lucky to live there. We love Traverse. What a wonderful place. A lot of coastal Michigan's just like this. Nice and quiet, conservative, really pretty. Used to be somewhat affordable, but not anymore. This place blew up, became too big. Now there's a big battle going on here between the growth and the no growth camps. A lot of people say, we need more people. So let's develop the hell out of everything make this a real resort town and then everybody else is like no we're full don't ruin it seems like the growth people win it This little airport in town saw 700,000 people come through last year. That was a record by a lot. People want to come up here and get away from the BS more and more these days. The place got discovered even more during COVID. And then one website made it worse and they published a story about how this little lake town now has more millennial millionaires than anywhere else in the country. They discovered it, and they've been coming here to work from home, or maybe at their second home. A friend of mine lives here, and he said, you see all these tech bro 30-year-olds prancing around town in their expensive hip clothes and fancy cars now? <laughs> That's the last thing you want up here, hip, cool, millennial, know-it-all brats. Good Lord. Come up here in the summer, and, well, you can't. It's full. This is like the new hot spot for young people to come up here for their weddings and bachelor parties. There's probably a dozen weddings a day up here on a summer weekend. The place is booked solid a year out. All the locals are like, the whole place now is filled with drunk tourists. There's nothing here for us locals now. It's all about the tourists. That doesn't sound like a desirable resort town to me. When I was here in town, there was a big to-do about two new hotels that are in the works. A lot of the old timers here said that they didn't need more eyesores like this in town. The roads are clogged. and We don't have enough affordable housing. The crime is getting worse. Enough is enough, they fume. But it's happening. 
Change is in the air. And you think that's bad? Amazon said it's building a warehouse up here. Uh oh, this place is cooked. There's gonna be 100,000 people up here one day. So essentially a lot of people come up here in the summertime for vacation. Usually just a weekend or maybe a week and they'll stay at a hotel, they'll go to all the restaurants, they'll be at the beaches, out on the boats and stuff like that, and then they'll go back home and they'll have a fond memory of Traverse City. But some people decide they liked it so much that now they wanna live here. And once they come up and actually buy property, their attitude changes completely because now they're a local and now they can make decisions and they can tell you what to do and what not to do. And so I know a lot of locals that have were born and raised here kind of resent that fact. That's my buddy Rollendale. He's born and raised Traverse City. We got together and had a pasty and a beer when I was in town. It's maxed out in the summertime. I mean, the traffic's crazy. You can't find a place to park. It's hard to get to the beach. You know, there's wait times at every restaurant. So it's hard to really justify living here year round as just a regular person if you can't even really enjoy those wonderful summer months. Like my mom, she moved here I mean, back in the early 80s and she's the first to tell you it's changed completely. It doesn't feel the same, it doesn't look the same, you don't even have the same kind of relationships with your neighbors. So, let's talk about future beer. That's overnight, that's in the Thursday morning, 11 a.m. System still pushing its way through. So, Thursday morning, you should expect travel problems. Snow will be coming down, it's got sloshy snow, adding up several inches. Well, would you look at that? It's the first time we've seen snow. It's about time. It's what I came up for, damn it. It ain't much. They thinking they're gonna get two or three inches, but it's better than nothing. Jeez, weirdest winter ever when this is considered a snowfall. This is just a normal morning most years. On our second day here, I woke up and saw our first snowfall. So we drove around and checked everything out. So exciting. It's not just locals gathering at the pasty shop to complain about traffic and long lines at the grocery store. They have some real issues here. Police officers and teachers and other important people, they can't afford to live here anymore. Look, they even have to close down sometimes because there aren't enough people in town. That sucks. There aren't enough buses to get the kids to school. And even the post office can't deliver mail sometimes because they can't find enough people to live here. They can't afford it. One of the resorts in town has to bring workers up here from the Caribbean in the summer so that they can stay open. People are like, there isn't enough housing for us and you wanna build all these new hotels? You're gonna to have to build public housing for all the illegal aliens that you're gonna to have to hire. I'm glad I don't live here. You can only imagine how the city council meetings go. Is anybody back here? Anybody home? And then there's the homeless thing. Remember this place? Hello? When I heard about Travers's homeless problem, I was pretty skeptical. Like, how bad could it really be, right? But OMG, bums, bums, bums. This is all in a small wooded park right in the middle of town. Oh my God. It's like a whole village. In Traverse City, Michigan, the best place to live. And oh my God. People used to hike through here and just enjoy being outside, but not anymore they don't. 
When we pulled up, I saw maybe 20 tents out by the road. I walked up and started talking to people. I met these two kind of wandering around. They had a really interesting story that I'll share later. But anyway, we got to talking and they said, uh, you think this is bad out by the road? You should go back and look in the woods. So I did. These people have a fence with their animals in it. Oh my god, I don't think I've ever seen that. They got the insulation foam. That's some permanent stuff right there. They are dug in for the winter. All the shelters are full, apparently. And they draw these people in here with food and money and support. And then there's nowhere for them to stay. So they're camping in the woods. But we're not in the woods. We're a block from the supermarket on the main drag. This is crazy. Apparently, Traverse City's government has a policy that draws all these people in from all over Michigan. They give them money and food and services. So they're flocking in here big time. And the locals are pissed. And I'm pretty sure they're going to be even more pissed after seeing this. I have a feeling that nobody in this small town knows just how bad it is in this park in the center of town. I don't think a lot of people come back here. There's been a bunch of overdoses back here, and people have died, just froze out here in the cold. A lot of people in Traverse City either don't know about this or don't want to admit this is going on in their own town, but it is. There are villages in the woods, half a mile from downtown, right behind the mire, and it goes on trash I don't think I even want to go over there or do I yes I do oh my god what the hell people left to live out in the woods in the cold. Do you think we'd make all these immigrants sleep out in the woods in a tent? No. They get whatever the hell they want. They get hotel rooms and food. I don't know if you've heard, but local governments are putting out a call to action saying, hey, does anybody have any room in their house so they can take in these poor migrant families? Maybe help them get on their feet and get adjusted. Anybody speak Spanish? Do you hear about calls to action for our homeless? This is America today. Look, you know me. Most of these people are bums and they want to live out here and get effed up all day. But there are people. It just goes on for hundreds of yards. Traverse City, Michigan, the best place to live in the state, not for these people. I don't think I've seen anything like this and I've been to a lot of homeless stuff. I don't know if I've ever seen anything like this before. It's so cold. It's probably 25. I'm freezing just walking around down here. And there are probably 
a hundred at least homeless tents and camps or homeless areas for at least a hundred people in the woods, in the trash. And we're right, right across the street from the main drag where everyone's at. This is crazy. This country is in trouble. Ew, these people are making everything terrible. It's gross. My kids have to see this. I shouldn't have to pay 1.2 million for a house and step in homeless shit. Oh, I get you, Karen. It's one of the few things that you and I agree on. But what are you going to do about it? Help them get on their feet? Offer them a job? Maybe a place to stay? Maybe give them some money? Help them get some counseling? Maybe get their lives cleaned up? Huh? So I thought, all you do is complain. Got cherry orchards. This is why this area is famous. Right here. They're all cherry trees. Come out here in the summertime, and there's cherries everywhere. Those are future cherries. That is a cherry orchard. There's cherry trees all over the county. Or were. Check this out. They aren't even making cherries up here as much anymore. The cherry capital of the world? What? I guess farmers or their families, they're selling their land for development. Fancy new condos instead of cherry orchards. Too much drama, farmers say. Over regulation and bugs. Weird weather. Forget it. China's driving down the cost of cherries. They drive down the cost of everything. Chinese. Plus, cherries just aren't as popular these days. Us Americans don't eat as many cherries like we used to. I hear if you drive around up here in the summer, you'll see these big stinky piles of dead cherries that have gone to waste. And more and more, you'll see cherry trees ripped out of the ground, waiting to be burned. I got the inside scoop from Sonia Richards, who runs the Cherry Stop in town. Um, if you've ever heard the phrase, land rich and money poor, you know, that's what's happening. And developers are coming in, wineries are coming in, they have a lot of money, they want to do whatever it is they're doing. And people who've been in the farming industry for a long time, you know, they might be third or fourth generation, but they're just not making enough money because of the market um, around the world with the cost of cherries. It just doesn't balance out and maybe their kids don't want to be farmers anymore, you know, so what do you do with all that land? And it just kind of makes sense to them to sell off. But it is, it is definitely a concern. And honestly, I don't know around the country how much that's happening, but here it is definitely a, a it's problem. It's happening all over the country. Yeah, 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 it's a thing. And it's not just, I know there's a big push for small farmers to get started. You know, when you have hundreds of acres of something, that's a big commitment, <laughs> you know, and you have to bring in a lot of money to pay for that land and to pay for all the equipment and the people that are needed. So there's a big push now for small farmers to get started, and that's kind of becoming a thing. I know that Michigan State has some pushes that way. Um, so maybe we'll see more people picking up, you know, smaller farms and, and doing some cherries and other fruits and things like that where they can maybe grow organically and get a higher price, you know, for, for their product. We'll have to kind of see what happens, but maybe the government will get involved. I don't know. I don't know where it's headed, but hopefully they stay around because it's been a thing for a really long time and it's kind of what we're known for. So, but you got to pay your people. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I don't want to go live in China and I don't, you know, I, I wouldn't feel good about doing what they're doing. That's for sure. So, you know, hopefully everybody in America can kind of start to see the, the value there and 
know that buying America, buying local, that's really what we need to be thinking about to support our own people. Mm -hmm. Well, it's about time we got some snow. It's day nine on the trip and it's coming down pretty decent, you know, an inch or two. This is why we came up here and they haven't had a lot of that this year. But I'm prepared, as you can tell, because I'm a snow-ready man with my mustache. And I'm hoping that maybe I get some snow in this stash. There you go. There's a little bit of snow in my stash. We're about ready to start heading up the hill towards the bridge on a snowy day in Traverse City, Michigan on day nine. Awful pretty, isn't it? Here's a typical Traverse City neighborhood. Pretty nice, huh? A lot of people want to retire up here because it's quiet, kind of. It's more than $400,000 for a house now. That might sound like a good deal, but that's a lot more than it used to be. And it's going up 7% a year now. And then you go down to see the super fancy part of town over by the lake. And it's buku bucks up there, mister. A lot of this is empty seasonal rentals. Folks with a bunch of land have a boat and a jet ski, probably a snowmobile. There's a housing shortage here, just like anywhere else, it seems. And all the rich people are making it worse. They're coming up here and snagging up homes for their second home or for weekly rentals. Or outside investors are buying them up. China's probably buying them up. I heard Traverse City's going to ban Airbnb here soon. If they haven't already. All these new homes going in. People do not like it. It's a whole political debate about what to do with short term rentals up here. But they got to figure it out. Rent's going to keep going up, and people that grew up here are going to have to leave to make room for the new breed. These houses are all somewhere between one and two million dollars. Nice homes. I bet they don't know their neighbors anymore. Half your pay for a view of the bay. That's what they say up here. And by the way, if you want to move to Michigan, Traverse City, or anywhere on the state, I know realtors all over the area. Email me, and I'll connect you to one. Now I'm going to show you what the bad side of Traverse City looks like. They're hoods. The poor side of town. Stuff around here sold for about two twenty-five to two seventy-five not too long ago. This is really nice for the other side of the tracks, huh everyone? I think a lot of you are like, that looks like the nice side of town where I live. Traverse City's really safe. A lot of people here don't even lock their doors. Maybe every 20 years there's a murder. But the crime's getting worse. More shit's getting stolen. And with all these bums in town now, you know how that's going to go. This right here is the cheapest home in town. 
It was listed for 239 when I was up here. I'll let you decide if you think that's a good deal or not. If you've got a lot of money, this place is awesome. You can do whatever you want. You can be secluded. You can have all the privacy you need. You can get away with a lot. Of... But if you don't have money, there's really not much going on. There's not much of a nightlife here. Um, on the other hand, a lot of people come up here to raise families because it is kind of great for that. It's very safe. I really enjoyed my childhood here. And it wasn't until I started to get in my teenage years that I kind of felt a little more constricted and realized I got to go explore and, and see what's up in this world because it can't be just this. But if this is what you're after, sort of isolation, safety, nature, privacy, then yeah, it's great for you. It can be really easy to be sheltered up here. It's mostly liberal, white, upper middle class. They don't want to acknowledge the real world that exists down in lower Michigan. If you like diversity, you'd probably be bored here. There's enough to do for those who are somewhat busy bodies. Downtown's very nice and clean, but it has a little bit of energy to it, even in the winter. Nightlife's pretty quiet this time of year, when the tourist drunks aren't around. Only a handful of places stay open past 11 in the winter. A lot of people up here, they spend their time outdoors, though. There's skiing, there's biking and hiking all over. Of course, you have the lake. And there's wineries everywhere, too. There's like 20 wineries up here. May not know it, but Traverse City was once called the drunkest city in the state. I know, right? What an honor. And that's saying a lot for Michigan, because they drink a lot up here. It's snowing. God, it's freezing. I came all the way down here for this shot. It's not even that good of a shot. And it is cold. Things I do for YouTube. And as you know, it is super cold up here. Traverse averages something like 130 inches of snow a year. And that lake, that's usually frozen over this time of year. When I was here, only 1% of Lake Michigan was frozen. And according to all the experts and scientists, that's the second lowest ever by that date in midwinter. Usually it's 30% frozen this time of year. Check this chart out. People around here are worried that one winter, none of Lake Michigan will freeze at all. They say that's going to throw off the ecosystem of that lake and screw up the tourist season. Well, I can already tell you it's screwed up the tourist season now, because this place was kind of dead when we were here. All right, I came out here to get a good shot across the water. It's 24 and the wind's blowing, and I don't like it very much. I don't know how these people do it, but it's beautiful out here. So I guess there's that. Out here in Traverse City, in the winter. Let's give some to the ducks. Cheese hits! It's a cheese hit party! Look like ants. Shore Lake, Michigan.
when I was in Traverse City, I saw what I could. It was damn cold. So walking around was not fun. Not even with my boots and my heated vest and gloves and my coat on and everything. It didn't matter. It was an icy wind that just cut through everything. Walking downtown Traverse City right now. It is cold. Probably 25 and windy. I feel like I'm glad I have this mustache. That's why I grew it. Keeps me warm. My heated vest. Downtown was pretty quiet. It's way less busy here when it's not summer. And without all the snow, there's really no reason for tourists to come up here at all. How's it going? Good. Good. Okay. These people are running. Hardcore. Not much snow on the ground. But it is freezing, I'll tell you that. Can't even feel my hands. Downtown Traverse City's nice. Very quaint. Very charming. Of course, you have the Cherry Hill Boutique. It's sort of the cherry capital of the damn world. Fancy jewelry, because this place is fancy. And art. And nice places to get clothes. It's very lovely, I have to say. I can see why it's so popular. I'll tell you that. On the first night, we went to Seven Monks Tap Room and we watched the UNC basketball game. I kind of wish I didn't because they got smoked by a really lousy team that night. We just had some pretzel bites and the local beer. Gotta watch my waistline. JK. People also told me I needed to check out a place downtown called Bootleggers. So I popped by. But I think a few of these people recognize me, so I didn't go in. Ain't got time for that. Not vibing on pics and autographs on my 20th anniversary night. My manager and I just wanted some alone time. Please respect that, people. Just a little bit of a social scene here in the middle of winter, though. Now, I wanted to see snow, but I'm not going to lie. I kind of liked having the place to myself for a couple of nights. It was kind of dead for this time of year. But summertime, good luck even sharing the sidewalk with folks. And then after that, my manager and I popped by a joint called You and I. I was told, that's where all the Red Wings fans hang out and watch the game. I was like, okay, let's go hang out there. <laughs> But the game was on and nobody seemed to care much. Perhaps when the playoffs start. I also learned when I was here that the Red Wings used to train right here in Traverse City in the preseason. In that building right there. But they don't anymore because of money. Well, judging by the number of people that were watching wrestling when we were up here, I think they'd be more excited about having a WWF up here anyway. Wrestling. So that's what they like up here. And hockey. Both nights we were out, the hotel sent a shuttle to pick us up. Classy move, Bayshore Resort, 
located right on the water in Traverse City. On the second day, we took a cruise out to the edge of town to see a roadside attraction. I'm a sucker for those. And that right there is the world's largest cherry pie pan. Because, you know, this is the cherry capital of the world for now. Michigan's favorite thing to drink is craft beer. I think they're like top five in the country for craft beer production and consumption. So of course, I had to try the local breweries. One day I went into Silver Spruce Brewing. It was a chill place. Of course, I get a pass, team. Cousin Jenny's has the best in Traverse City. Michigan's favorite thing to eat are pasties. Well, up here in northern Michigan, anyways. I'm going to talk a lot more about pasties as I continue my journey in this state. I even did a pasty test in another video. Pasties are these hot pocket things that they fill up with all kinds of goodness. Beef, chicken, pork, potatoes, veggies, pizza stuff. Every place up here has their own twist on them. The Europeans brought this idea over here when they were down in the iron mines. They needed something easy that they could pick up and eat when they were underground. I sat down with my buddy Roland Dale and we had one on a cold afternoon. Nothing like a pasty on a cold afternoon in Michigan. Steak and cheddar. Woo! All right. On night two, we went to a place called Rare Bird. Supposedly, this is where the governor comes in when she's here. Blah, nobody likes her. And this is where the celebrities eat when they're in town in the summer. I didn't see a celebrity, though. But you know what they say. If you don't see a celebrity, then it must be you. I drank a fancy drink that I can't remember the name of. That's what you do when you're famous. Drink things and forget things. <laughs> Fun place though. I like TC. It's been said when you call a place paradise, kiss it goodbye. It sounds like it's bye bye time for this joint. Another small town American casualty. It seems like every small town I visit is either crumbling away into dust or getting ruined by growth and wealth. I spent a lot of time talking about the drama here and the problems they have to deal with, just like where you live. There's no perfect place. Will Traverse City, Michigan get ruined one day? I don't think it's possible. For the people who've lived here for a long time, they might think so. I think Northwest Michigan's imperfections are trivial compared to most of our cities. But you never know. I don't think anyone in town ever saw this coming. Yeah, there's really like two Traverse Cities. And there's the one that they want people to see when they come up here on vacation, in the summertime usually. And then there's the one that everyone else has to deal with year round when they're all gone. What's up, man? I'm is there like nowhere for you guys to go? Like it's freezing cold out here. Uh, you guys, are you guys camping here? It's freezing cold. You guys, they don't have a shelter or anything for, for people. They do. They have like a few, but they have, most of them have waiting orders. Oh, so there's, there's no room. Yeah. Oh man. How many people are out here? You got a YouTube channel? Yeah. What is you? Why don't you go in the shelter? Because me and her, um, she has separation anxiety okay. and PTSD, so she has somebody to be there for when she goes to sleep. And so I'm also pregnant. Yeah. You're you're pregnant out yeah. here. <laughs> yeah. Why can't you go into the shelter? It's just a. I I can't really couple. sleep without him. Yeah. Oh, and they're you said they're full. The shelter's full. Yeah, most of them have waiting list. Yeah. And there, there are churches, is there anywhere that will take churches you guys? Churches won't really take you unless somebody's there and you can't sleep there at night. So you have no options except to sleep out here? 
Really though, if we have a tent. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, are you and you're leaving? You said you're leaving? Yeah. Where are you guys going to go? Uh, we're going to move states. We're going to go to Kansas. You're going to Kansas mm -hmm. to like start a new life? Yeah, really though. Okay. Mm -hmm. What's in Kansas? I got a house down there. Oh, yeah. You have a house in Kansas? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're going to go down there right now. Bro. You just bought it? Yeah, I'm excited, bro. Oh, what? How'd you buy a house in Kansas from here? Bitcoin. Bitcoin? Mm -hmm. Shut up! No, for real. How much did you make on Bitcoin? About 500000 Shut the fuck up. But it's just in Bitcoin. I haven't withdrawn it yet. So you have a half a million dollars in a Bitcoin account that you just bought a house. Yep. Bought it, and you're going to Kansas. Yep. And you're living in a tent right now. Yeah, that's why we're just giving away our stuff. When did you decide to do this? Yesterday. We just got the plane tickets. We got to go up there to the house. But you've had that money for how long? About three days. The Bitcoin money? Uh-huh. Why did it only come? Because I got it to where it said a goal of 500000 so Oh, I so you've been, you've been making all this money yep. and you just decided I'm cashing out going to Kansas. Yep. Good for you, man. Yep, because it's closer to my home state, Texas. Okay. Mm -hmm. How long ago did you buy your Bitcoin? Um, I'd say about half, maybe a whole year ago. It's not been that long. I'm shocked. Mm -hmm. This That is a great story. Yep. Are you looking to move and need advice? I do consulting. That's right. I'll sit down and talk about where the next perfect place for you and your family should be. I do it all the time. Together, let's find you a new home that's safe and checks all your boxes. And I can also help you find your new house too. Email me and I'll work with you. I'm not just helping you figure out where to move, but I can help you find your perfect home too. That's right. I know awesome, reliable agents all over the country. And I'd love to connect you to somebody who can help you search for that perfect home. And by the way, if you want to learn about where you should live, you should go to my website, homesnacks.com slash find your place. On my website, you get tips on where you should move and what the costs are and a whole lot more. It's like an AI Nick Johnson consultation for free. And if you want to buy some Mappy gear, click the store link on my homepage. From there, you can check out the latest merch. There's hoodies, coffee cups, stickers, and shirts. Show off how much you love Mappy and support the channel. And I'm on Cameo too. If you want me to send you or somebody you know a personalized video message, go to Cameo and search Nick Johnson YouTube. It's fun. Hey guys, if you learned something new about America or what it's like to live in America, great. You should think about subscribing and turning on your notifications. You can also click one of these videos or playlists for more. Hey YouTube world, I'm Sage, Nick's manager. You've enjoyed a Corner House Entertainment production, so watch another one!